Right guys, let's take a look at the structure of the heart. So we'll think about, um, during this brief video, we'll think about the four chambers of the heart. We'll name them and just talk very briefly about sort of their roles and functions. Uh, we'll talk then about the four valves of the heart, and then we'll finish up talking about the vessels that lead to and from the heart. And just try and work out what they're called and what they do. So let's get in. So the first thing we need to realise um, is that when we're talking about the heart, we need to decide or define which side of the heart we're talking about. So imagine the heart on the screen is the heart that belongs to someone who is facing you. Okay, so you're looking at someone else's heart facing you. So your left is their right and your right is their left. And we do the same with the heart. We, so we define as we look at the heart that's currently on the screen, the left, our left is actually the right side of the heart. And our right is actually the left side of the heart because we're imagining it's somebody else's heart who's facing us. So on the right hand side of the heart, the blood that's flowing through the right hand side of the heart or the right side of the heart uh, is blood that is returning from the body. So this is blood that's been um, sent around the body and has, has done what it's needed to do, has delivered its oxygen and so on, uh, and picked up carbon dioxide and, and other things and is now returning from the body to the heart. And it arrives at the heart through veins. And we, the way that I remember it, at least, is that the word vein contains the word in. So a vein is any, any uh, vessel that is going in or back towards, in towards the heart. So the blood that is returning in through the veins to the heart on the right side of the heart is deoxygenated blood. That means it's had its oxygen content uh, removed, not entirely, but to a certain percentage some of that oxygen has been removed and used um, around in the tissues uh, for respiration and from the right side of the heart and this will become relevant in a moment when we talk about the the different uh, vessels and the size of the vessels and so on um, from the right side of the heart the blood goes to the lungs on the left side of the heart which again is on uh, our right as we look at somebody else's heart the left side of the heart uh, is receiving blood back from the lungs. So the right side sends the blood to the lungs and then the lungs, um, the blood returns from the lungs. And when it returns from the lungs, it arrives in the left side of the heart. And again, because it's been to the lungs, it's picked up oxygen. So it's got a greater oxygen content now than it did when it arrived back from the body. So we talk, we talk about this blood being oxygenated blood. And then from there, it's pumped to the body, to the various tissues that need oxygen to respire uh, via arteries, arteries. And I remember this artery begins with an A and so does the word away. That may or may not help you, but arteries go away and veins go in. And what's important to note here, just briefly before we move on, is that on the left side, the chamber walls of the left side of the heart um, particularly in this lower chamber, which we'll uh, explain more about in a moment, um, the, the chamber walls are a lot thicker, a lot thicker on the left side of the heart. And then the whole heart is essentially divided into two, roughly along that black line that you can see on the screen, um, there or thereabouts, by, um, by part of the heart, which is known as the septum. And that the septum simply separates. So septum separates, separates the right side from the left side of the heart. So let's look at the chambers. So there are four chambers you'll recall uh, in the heart. Uh, and the first two we're gonna talk about are the top two chambers. The two chambers at the top of the heart, which you can see labeled here, the right atrium and the left atrium. Now that's the word atrium is singular. Um, you'll notice the title of this slide is atria. That's just the plural. Okay, so one atrium, two atria. So we have a left atrium and we have a right atrium. And you might have heard the word atrium uh, used in the context of buildings. Uh, you come into a hallway, a large entry chamber, if you like, and that is often called the atrium of a building. So the atrium is the entry chamber. And that's the same with the heart. So these are what we might call receiving chambers, where when the blood returns to the heart, the first place it goes, whether it's coming to the right or the left side of the heart, the first place it goes is it enters into these receiving chambers called atria. 
they fill with blood and once they're um, pretty much full of blood there's a contraction in the atria and the blood is then pushed through the valves which we'll talk about in a moment pushed through the valves downwards uh, into the larger chambers beneath um, and those larger chambers beneath are called ventricles um, and when the blood is pushed through uh, the atria contract initially whilst the ventri ventricles are relaxed and the blood flows into the ventricles so we've got two ventricles as well so you can see where the atria are the ventricles are underneath them and these are the larger chambers underneath so there we are on the diagram left ventricle down there and the right ventricle uh, underneath the right atrium so these are larger chambers and we sometimes refer to these as discharging chambers because they're the chambers from which when they contract blood is ejected so blood goes out from the heart via the ventricles it's kind of the last port of call if you like uh, as it as the blood is leaving the heart whether it's going to the lungs or to the body um, the ventricles contract and send blood out of the heart so um, the left ventricle sends blood to the body um, and the right ventricle uh, sends blood to the lungs and you'll notice that they are different in size um, and in particular different in thickness so that the muscle wall um, so the heart muscle, the cardiac muscle, the wall is much thicker on the left hand side uh, of the heart. And the reason for that is the left side, as it says on the screen now, the left side, the left ventricle is pumping blood to the body, which means it's got a far greater distance to go than the right side, which only needs to pump to the lungs. And as you know from your AMP, uh, the lungs are right there next to the heart. So it doesn't require as much pressure doesn't require therefore the muscle to be quite as uh, quite as thick or as powerful on the right side because the blood's only got to get to the lungs and back whereas on the left side of the heart it's much more muscular because there needs to be a much greater amount of pressure in order to um, eject that blood and get it to continue its, its circuit around the entire body and return again to the heart um, back again to the right atrium so there are four valves as well, four valves that uh, separate these chambers from one another uh, and keep blood from just flowing forwards, backwards or wherever at any given time. So the four valves are these. The first valve is the bicuspid valve. Um, often it's called the mitral valve uh, and either of those names is fine. Um, and that is there between uh, the left atrium and the left ventricle and it simply stops blood from flowing from the atrium into the ventricle before it's ready to do so. On the other side of the heart between the uh, the right uh, atrium and the right ventricle we've got the tricuspid valve and there it is on the diagram. Then between the ventricles and the the vessels that lead out of the heart we've got another pair or another set of valves that stop the blood from being ejected uh, from the ventricles um, until the pressure is great enough to actually send the blood where it needs to go. So we've got two semilunar valves. One is the semilunar or aortic valve, which is circled there. Not the greatest diagram, unfortunately, to represent where the aortic valve is. Um, but blood leaving the, the left ventricle goes through the aortic valve and into that very large red vessel um, that you can see at the top there, which is the aorta. And we'll come to that again in a second. Then we've also got another semilunar valve, um, which is circled there, uh, and that is the pulmonary or pulmonary valve. And pulmonary simply is a word that we use that means to relate to the heart. So whenever you hear about pulmonary or pulmonary, we're talking about, sorry, not the heart, the lungs. Uh, relates to the lungs. So when we talk about cardiopulmonary respiration or uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, the P bit, the pulmonary bit, means to do with the lungs. So semilunar or pulmonary, pulmonary valve is the one that allows blood to flow through it before it heads to the lungs. So the purpose of all these valves is essentially the same. Um, the first thing they do is they prevent blood from flowing in the wrong direction. So what we don't want is when the atria contract, when the atria contract, we don't want the blood flowing back out of the heart. We want it to flow through into the right direction, into the ventricles. But then, in once the blood is in the ventricles, we also don't want it to flow back into the atria, so that 
um, the mitral valve and the, the bicuspid and the tricuspid valves close uh, when uh, the ventricles contract and then blood flows out the way we want it to flow. So it prevents blood flowing in the wrong direction. Um, and these, um, these valves, particularly the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves, are held in place by what we call heart strings or cord cordae tendinii. Cordae tendinii. So heart strings, they're, they're basically sort of uh, tendons um, that keep the valves from inverting, from, from turning inside out and going the wrong way. They sort of hold them in place to make sure that blood can only flow one way and any pressure that's pressed back on them, they don't invert. They stay in place so the blood can't flow the wrong way. Uh, and the, the phrases you'll notice, semilunar, semilunar, tricuspid, bicuspid. The cuspid and the lunar parts of those words just describe the shape of them. So the cuspid um, means that they, they form a sort of a peak. So you may have heard people talking about being on the cusp of a wave, for example. So when a wave forms and it rises up and just before the moment the wave breaks, uh, it rises into a peak. That peak is known as the cusp. That peak is known as the cusp. And lunar um, means moon shaped, moon shaped. So the tricuspid and bicuspid valves um, peak and they're held in that shape by the chordae uh, tendinii. And the semilunar valves are sort of half semilunar, half moon shaped. And that's what keeps them in place and allows blood to flow in one direction, but not in the other direction. So, what about finally the major arteries and veins that? Um, that allow blood to flow to and from the heart. So initially we've got the aorta, which I've already mentioned. That, so that very large vessel uh, at the top of the heart um, there that's labelled on the screen, that is the aorta. Um, and the aorta is the largest artery in the body. In terms of diameter, it's the largest artery in the body. And because the blood is being squeezed from the left ventricle at great pressure, at really high pressure. And again, that's because it's got to go a long way. It's got to get around the entire body. The aorta experiences really high blood pressure. In fact, the highest blood pressure anywhere in the entire cardiovascular system is, is found in the aorta. And so therefore, the aorta needs to be really elastic. It has to be quite stretchy in order to account for the changes in blood pressure, especially during exercise where blood pressure really shoots up. Uh, very high. So the aorta, as you can sort of see from the diagram, it loops up, um, it heads off um, towards the top part of the body, but also it loops down back behind the heart and splits again uh, below the diagram that we've got on the screen, splits down around the level of the diaphragm and then splits off and heads off down to the legs. The vena cava or vena cava um, is this blue coloured uh, vessel on the uh, on the right side of the heart, that's the left as we look at it. Um, and there we have the two parts of it. Um, it's one vessel really, um, but we um, we call the superior part of the vessel, uh, or the vena cava at the top is the superior vena cava, superior meaning at the top, and inferior vena cava, the, the vena cava at the bottom. So both join together just before or just as they uh, return into uh, or return blood into the right atrium. So the superior vena cava brings blood from above the heart, this is pretty obvious, and the inferior vena cava brings blood from below the heart. So finally, last thing to note is some more, um, some more arteries and veins. So here we've got the pulmonary vein. So I've already said that pulmonary relates to the lungs. And so the vein is the vessel going in, vein contains the word in, the vessel going into the heart from the lungs. And it's that purple one there. There's one on either side. You can see the one poking out uh, the side of the uh, superior vena cava there. Um, and the role of the pulmonary vein is to simply bring the blood back from the lungs, so not very far, back from the lungs, back to the heart. So obviously that, that blood that's returning from the lungs has been oxygenated. And this is interesting because the pulmonary vein is the only vein that carries oxygenated blood. It's a vein because it's going into the heart. That's what a vein is. is that's how we classify it. But the pulmonary vein has already picked up oxygen from the lungs and is bringing it to the heart ready to be sent around the body. So therefore, it's the only vein that carries oxygenated blood.
The pulmonary artery, on the other hand, is this one. So the pulmonary artery, A for away artery, uh, this is where um, the blood from the right side of the heart, that's come back from the body, it's already deoxygenated, is heading towards the lungs to pick up a load more oxygen and to drop off the carbon dioxide. So it's because it's going away from the heart, it's an artery, it's a pulmonary artery because it's going away to the lungs. Um, as we've said here, it goes from the heart to the lungs. And again, interestingly, this is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. Well, I hope that's been helpful uh, to get us started on understanding the structure of the heart.